Hey guys, CB Super. I made these shock waves a while back. One of the problems with them though is that they extend all the way out to the edges of the frame. So I had a comment the other day asking, how would you mask this out so that I could size this differently? Because you'll notice, let's say I was to jump into Fusion real quick, just to show you an example of what I'm trying to explain. Come over to the media pool and I'm gonna just grab this drone footage. Um, I wanna take this shockwave footage and I wanna put it on top of this drone footage. First off, let me go ahead and just type in X, shift space, type in XF, and I'm gonna transform this and make it just a little bit smaller. As we look at it just like this, and then I press play, and I'm gonna make sure my playback is in kind of a proxy chord resolution, that's good. Now as I press play, you'll notice that it extends out and it uh, hits off the edges of the frame here. Now obviously, um, I wanna get rid of this black background, so I'll come into the merge node, and where it says apply mode, I'm just gonna screen it over. So now when I when I look at it, okay, I'm seeing this, that's cool. Maybe I want it to be colorized because that's just not giving me the effect. So maybe I'll type in uh, an alpha glow, turn the alpha gain down, maybe change the color to like a blue. All right, now I have some kind of like bluish explosion, right? This is, uh, let's just bring in a color correction node and I'm just gonna gamma this down just a little bit so I can see this explosion just a little bit better. All right, so now we have this really cool explosion, but the problem is, is that we still see these hard edges um, as it reaches the end of the canvas. So we could come into the transform node and we could come to canvas and we could wrap this. But the problem with this is that as it expands out, it's gonna kaleidoscope and it's gonna do something that is not realistic. So we could play around with that, but let's take a look at leaving it at canvas. The obvious fix to this would be just to add an ellipse and maybe I'll bring this ellipse down under and I'll put it right in the merge because what I want is, let's go ahead and check the alpha out real quick uh, of just the ellipse. I want this alpha, whatever's white will be opaque and whatever's black will be transparent. So if I come over to, let me go ahead and get out of the alpha and then come back over into the merge. If I was to shrink this mask, you'll see that I can now, this is gonna take place within the mask, but as it hits the edges of the mask, it is going to dissipate. Now it doesn't dissipate in a very realistic manner. We could add a little bit of soft edge to that. So as it gets, it'll slowly dissipate. If I click off the, so you don't see the red, that might make a little bit more sense. So now it kind of dissipates outward and that might be enough to get you by. One thing that's kind of annoying is um, it gives you two sliders. It gives you a width and a height slider, which is really nice when you want to just change one, the width or the height. I'm gonna go ahead and Command Z that. But if you wanna move these both at the same time and you don't wanna move one and then have to move the other, a really simple way is to just go down to the height, double click on it, hit the equal sign and then hit enter. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create the expression window. Now you can just take this little plus sign, hold it down, and then drop it onto the width. And now, whenever you move the width, it's also going to move the height. So they're gonna stay connected to each other. I don't know why you have to use the expression just to just to do that. You would think it would be like, you know, built in, uh, you know, like just click a button or something. But for whatever reason, that's what we have to do. You can even increase the soft edge if you like even more so. And you could even make this a little bit smaller. Now, when we come into this and we look at this effect, you notice it kind of dissipates as it goes outward. Um, but I'm still seeing this border. Go to the farthest part where it has expanded the most and then stop, start bringing in your mask until you no longer see the borders. The soft edge actually is probably gonna need to come in a little bit because as it is right there, I'm gonna need, I, I still want enough of the mask that I would be able to see the actual effect. But the nice thing is that we can always increase the size of the effect. Maybe if I want the effect to be larger, I can actually remove it from this portion. Maybe we'll bring this merge up a little bit. And then all I have to do is add another transform in after, and then this will merge on top of the color corrector and then back into the media out. All right, so, and then all we have to do is we have to give something for this merge node, because right now, this merge node has no background, so we can give it a background by just bringing in a background node, plugging it in, 
And now all we have to do is drop the alpha down all the way. And um, essentially what we've done is we've just allowed ourselves to mask out at any point that we want just by adding a merge and a background. And now we can transform this. If we say we want this to be larger, all we have to do is size it up. And now we can look at it superimposed. So we've made the effect larger, but you'll notice that now it dissipates over time, which is pretty nice. And then if you want it for whatever reason, you don't want this blue to linger, all you have to do is maybe at this point right here, we'll go ahead and blend it out, keyframe it, go a couple frames forward, blend it back up. And now if we press play, we'll notice that it just kind of dies out over time. All right, so that's one way you could do that. And you don't need the alpha glow. I just threw that on there just to give it a little bit of color, just so we could see it a little bit better. Even without it, you still have the shock wave, and then you can add in what, you know, you can colorize it however you want. Um, so that's one way just by using an ellipse. But let's say we want a more organic mask. Instead of using an ellipse, what we could do is let's go ahead and delete this ellipse. And let's bring in a fast noise. And we can create a mask, an organic mask, using a fast noise in a very similar fashion that we actually created the original shockwave. And let me show you how to do this real quick. I load the fast noise up by itself, and I'm just going to adjust some parameters to give it an alpha. If I click over here where it says type, go to gradient, where it says gradient type uni, I want it to be radial. Now all I do is I take this, which is actually the start point for the gradient, I'm actually going to just type in 0.5 tab 0.5, not T. And I can bring this other end and I can just bring this in a little bit. And now we start to see that I'm getting kind of a, a circle here. Well, I can come back over and I can add a little bit of detail to it if I want. Add a little bit of contrast. Maybe uh, I can brightness it down just a little bit. And I can play with the scale. Now I can jump back over to the other side and we can start playing with uh, these two gradient sliders. So if I move the black over, it's going to get harder in between where the black and the white is. Uh, likewise, if I move the white over, it does the same thing. Now I want to kind of invert these. So rather than using an invert command, I'm actually just going to move it over onto the other side. And I can go ahead and play with this until I get a either soft edge. If, I, if I'm looking for a soft edge, all I have to do is move these away from each other. Um, but let's keep in mind that what we're actually doing is we're not creating a circle. What we're really doing is we're just shrinking and dilating the amount of pattern that you see. Because remember, this is a noise generator, so it generates a pattern. If I was to scale this pattern up, you'll see that it's an actual pattern. Right? And if I, if I scale it down, it starts to get closer to that pattern. Now I can add a bit of seethe rate. I can start to drop the contrast down and that's gonna do is it's gonna solidify and make less of the pattern visible. And now as, as, as it moves around, now you get kind of an animated organic amoeba kind of looking of a mask. And so we can play around with this by giving it different looks by you know clicking on the discontinuous button. We could also animate the size if we wanted to over time. We could make it expand and contract if we wanted to. We can also come back over into the gradient and if we wanted maybe more of this black, we can either just start to bring it back in. With the right triangle clicked in the black, we're gonna wanna drop that alpha all the way down so now it's just transparent. So now if I click on, say if I hit A to, to reveal the alpha, you'll notice that this is now an alpha that will work inside of you know, using it as a mask. So let's jump over to this merge real quick and let's kind of take a look at this. So now what we've done is we've used this fast noise as an animated mask for our effect. And so if we watch it all over again, we'll notice that it probably needs to be a little bit smaller, right? Uh, because it is still reaching the edges of the confine. I probably want it to start to uh, die off right around there. All I got to do is take the end and I can start to drive it in. And so now right around here, now it won't allow it to get beyond. And now I can size it up, size it down if I need to. Because remember, we actually made this larger. Let's say if I was to size this down, which would be the more realistic uh, way you might use this, you'll see that it will no longer hit the edges and it has a nice fall off. 
So that's just one way you can you can kind of use this. Let's go ahead and just see what this looks like on say a black background. So you can probably see it just a little bit better. All right. So we've taken something that used to go all the way out to the outer edges of the of the frame and we basically brought the frame inwards. And you can do that with an ellipse mask like we showed, but you can also do that by animating your own fast noise and creating an animated mask. And so it still has bits of transparency. So as the original media gets towards the outside here, it's going to dissipate over however far your transparency is. So if say you wanted to make this transparency even further, again, you just go ahead and you move this black slider out a little bit and you can also move the white slider in if for whatever reason like you just want a lot of uh, dissipation over time and now you'll see um, when we watch it you get a little bit more fall off but the problem is here I think we're still starting to run into the edge here so we may need to bring it in even a little bit more Ah, there you go. And now it just kind of dissipates over time. So that's one way you could do it. You can use this with any stock effect that you find that maybe goes to the extent of the screen. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.